What's up guys, Justin here with thecgessentials.com back with another Blender RBD Lab tutorial for you. So in today's video, we're gonna use this to simulate breaking wood inside a blender. So let's go ahead and just jump into it. All right, so this is similar to some of the tutorials that are on the RBD Lab um, YouTube channel, which I will link to in the notes down below. Um, they've got some great stuff on the channel, but um, some things that beginners might struggle with is for some of these, at least, they don't really talk through what they're doing. So I thought we could kind of talk through some of this and uh, I could kind of talk through some of the steps just for those of you that are trying to learn how to use this add-on. Um, I guess I should back up. So RBD Lab is a physics add-on for Blender that helps you automate the process of fracturing objects and creating different things, things like that. So um, I will link to this in the notes down below if you're interested in this add-on, but let's go ahead and get started. So first thing I've done is I've just taken some cubes and I've just scaled them like this, right? So I've created these, um, I've scaled them down so that they look like boards. And so now what we wanna do is first off, I can't remember if I applied rotation and scale, so I'm gonna go ahead and do that. But now what we wanna do is we wanna use the RBD Lab add-on in order to fracture these. All right, so what we wanna do is we wanna start by clicking on this button for scatter right here. And so what's gonna happen is if you use the scatter function, it's gonna come in here and it's going to kinda of show you where the chunks are going to be that this is gonna scatter into. And you can um, adjust the number of chunks by adjusting the secondary function right here. So you can adjust this anywhere to very low or very high. In this case, I'm gonna bring this up to something like 100 and um, we're gonna kinda of leave it at that. And actually what we wanna do is we wanna select all of these and click on the scatter function so that it comes through here and it scatters across each one of these. So what that's gonna do is that's gonna set this up so that we can then um, fracture this into pieces. And so then the other thing we wanna do, because if we were to scatter this right now, um, this would break this into like rectangular chunks. Um, remember that basically wood is a little bit more elongated, so it's got like splinters in it, and it's more like the grain run, runs along the length of the wood. So what we wanna do is we wanna come in here and we wanna adjust the Z value to something low, so maybe like 0 0.05 or something like that. And then we can come in here and we can name our collection. So in this case, we're gonna uncheck the box for auto name, and we're just gonna call this like fence. So now we've got this all, whoops, we've got this all selected and I think we're ready to go. So let's go ahead and click on the button for fracture. And so when you click on the button for fracture, what that's gonna do is that's gonna fracture this into pieces. And notice how these pieces are more elongated. You can get an even stronger look of that if you were to set your Z value like 0 0.01 or something like that. But we're gonna let this work and then we'll come back and take a look at what it's created. So if you jump over into solid framing mode, you can see what this did is this broke this up into some longer pieces like this. So again, if you want these pieces to be a little bit more long and narrow, um, you could adjust that Z value when you do this to more like of a 0 0.01 or something like that. But I think we're gonna call this good for right now. And so notice what this did is this took all of these cells right, that this fractured these into and it put them in a collection. And so what we wanna do is we wanna select the entire collection here. So the easiest way I've found to do that is just select one of these and then do a shift G and click on selection. And that's gonna select everything inside of that um, collection. And so the first thing we wanna do is we wanna come in here, because right now, if we were to click play, nothing is gonna happen, right? Because there's nothing that's actually been applied to this, it's just been fractured. Well, what we wanna do now is we want to add rigid body actives to this simulation. So basically what that's gonna do is that's gonna set this up so that these actually act as rigid bodies. Meaning if I click in here like this, notice how nothing's really going to happen except this is gonna fall through the ground. But um, now we have that physics applied to these objects. So then I'm gonna go back and do a Shift G again and I'm gonna select everything that's in the fence. And actually what I wanna do now is I wanna select my ground right here because if you notice this is falling through the ground. So we just wanna click on the button for add ground and it actually adds a ground plane in here so I can actually delete out the plane that we had in there before. So now, if we were to go back, click play, notice how this is gonna fall, and then it's just gonna kinda shatter together like this, which is not exactly what we want, but it gives us an idea that everything is working, which is good. So um, usually I'll run this just to make sure that everything is working, that the collision with the ground is working, everything like that. Notice how this basically just falls into a bunch of splinters. So now I'm gonna go back and what we need to do is we need to set this up 
so that these don't fall down, right? So what we can do is there's a function down below called glue. And what glue is gonna do is that's gonna um, keep all of the stuff together, right? So it's gonna take all of your fence and it's actually going to kind of glue the pieces together. We'll go ahead and put this to a value of, we'll call it, let's start with like 150 for right now. So we'll type in 150, we'll click on add glue constraint right here. What that means is that means that now these are going to stick together a little bit more. And I wanna go ahead and I wanna select them. So I'm gonna do a Shift G, Collection, Fence. I'm gonna move them down so that they're aligned with my ground plane as well. So something like this. So the other thing we wanna do with all these selected, is we wanna scroll up and notice how there's a drop down in here. Right now this is set to act as concrete. So each one of these is acting as if it's a concrete piece. And we don't necessarily want that. What we want instead is we wanna change the way these interact to the timber option that's in here. So if we take the timber option right here, click on it, and then click on the button for update, this is gonna act a little bit different, right? So now if I click play, so it's not really moving around the way that it was before. Um, it's just kind of in place like this. So now what we can do is we can come in here and we can add our physics. And so now what we wanna do is we wanna bring an object through here that's going to basically break our pieces of wood, right? And let's go ahead and bring something in. Let's go ahead and bring in our UV sphere like this. I'm just gonna move it up. So G, Z to move it up. And then I'm actually gonna scale it down on the Z axis like this, almost like a giant Frisbee. And you can really make this whatever you want. I just want this to be something that's gonna come through and it's gonna take out all of the tops of my fence panels, right? So I just want something wide kind of like this. So then we'll move this back. It doesn't really matter what your shape is. So we'll just move this back. And so now we're gonna use this in order to break our fence. And so in order for this to work, we need this to do a couple different things, right? So the first thing we need to do is we need to have it move inside of our animation. Because right now, if I move this forward, notice how nothing's really moving, right? Nothing is happening. So what we need to do is we need to take this object and we need to keyframe its location. So to do that, all I have to do is just click the I button right here and click on location. So what that's done is that's keyframed my location at frame zero. And now at frame 20, I want this to have moved through like this, right? So something like this. So now we're just gonna type in I and click on location again. So what that's gonna do is that's gonna keyframe this object moving through my scene like this. And so if we were to click play, still nothing is gonna happen, right? So this is gonna pass through this object, but it's not really doing anything. And the reason for that is because we haven't applied any kind of physics to the sphere object. I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna apply my rotation and scale here. But now what we can do is with this object, we just need to go into the physics settings, and we just need to set this as a rigid body. So this needs to be a rigid body, type active, and you need to make sure you've checked the box for animated. And so what that's gonna do is now, if we were to run our animation, it's gonna run kind of slow the first time through. It's going to collide with our fence object, just like this. And notice what that's doing, is that's coming through here and that's pulling the fence forward. And so the reason it's pulling the fence forward is there's actually a couple reasons. So first off, the glue value of our fence is too strong, meaning these pieces are kind of like sticking together a little bit more than we want them to do, right? But the other problem is notice how it's pulling the bottom of this fence along with it. Well, what we want to do is we want to take the bottom of that fence and set it so that it's not moving. So we're just going to come in here to the front view. And what we want to do is we want to select some of the fence pieces right here around the base of our object. I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to do a shift click um, or a shift double click in order to deselect my plane. But what we want to do is we want to take these bottom pieces right here and we want to convert those to passive. And what that means is that means those are going to remain in place um, even though the rest of this is going to be part of an active simulation. So if I click play again, it's going to go ahead and simulate this coming through. Well, now notice the base of the fence stays in place like this. So now the only thing we need to do um, in order to fix the way that this is pulling the whole fence along with it is we just need to adjust the glue value down a little bit. 
And in this case, let's go ahead and let's bring our glue value down to something really low, like one. So if I do a shift G and select my collection, select my fence, notice how when you do that now, um, your passive objects don't get selected, which is perfect because we don't want to adjust them. But I'm just gonna come in here and I'm just gonna bring my glue strength down to something like one. I'm gonna click on update. So now if we run our simulation, so if we click play, watch this coming through. Notice how now our fence is breaking across the middle instead of it pulling the whole thing along with it like this. And so one other thing I wanna talk about is let's go ahead and let's apply some materials to this fence. So, um, because what we want, right, is this, we want this to look like wood. And so what we can do in order to do that is just apply kind of a brown material. So we're just gonna do a shift G, collection, fence, and our materials. Notice how this has a material for outer material and inner material. And so that's important because the inner material is gonna be like what's on the inside of the wood. And so that gives us an opportunity to make the outer material something. So maybe we'll click in here, make this like a brown material. And so we can come in here and we can change our inner material base color to something lighter. So maybe like, more like, maybe something like this. And so right now, what that does is that gives us a wood material with an outer and an inner material. And so that's great, but let's go ahead. And in addition to doing this, what we might wanna do is we might wanna add either some dust or some debris coming off of this. So there's options down in the particle function down below in order to add those things. So if I click down into particles, notice how I have options for debris. I have options for dust and I have options for smoke. And so you don't really get a whole lot of smoke coming off of this. Probably what we want is we want a little bit of debris. So what we wanna do is we wanna come in here and we wanna find the moment when our sphere hits our wood. And so what we wanna do is we just wanna do a shift G we wanna select this collection and we wanna add particles emitting from broken. So we just wanna click on the button for emit from current frame. We wanna find the frame where this kind of first breaks our fence, right? So maybe not like the very initial one, but maybe something like keyframe 11. I'm gonna go ahead and rerun the simulation real quick. But then with these selected, I just want to click on the button for emit from current frame. What that's going to do is that's going to add particle debris coming from this particular frame on anything that was broken. So for any broken pieces of the fence, it's going to emit particles that look like debris. All right, and so one thing you're going to notice about this is if we click on the play button and run this, the debris isn't going to be right, right? What it's going to do is it's basically going to create debris that looks like a bunch of giant chunks, right? Like something out of concrete, but way too big. And so you can come into your debris settings and you can adjust the size here. But what we really want is even if we bring this down, notice how this is wrong, right? It's like little rocks are coming off of this, but that's not how wood breaks. When wood breaks, wood breaks and it creates a bunch of splinters. So what we wanna do is we just wanna create some quick custom debris. And so custom debris is really easy to create. So all you have to do is just create some objects of your own and then you can click on the button for create custom debris. So in this case, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do a shift A, I'm gonna add a mesh, and I'm just gonna do an icosphere for right now. So I'm gonna do a GZ. I'm just gonna scale this in along the X and Y axes so that this looks like a splinter, right? So I'm gonna bring this in. And again, all I'm trying to do is make it that kind of like long, narrow look that you get off of a splinter. This does not need to be perfect by any means because they're gonna be really small. Right, so I'm gonna bring this down and create something like this, probably even smaller actually. So we're gonna have some small debris pieces that look like this. And so we're gonna take this object, make this small, and then we'll do a Shift D and we'll duplicate it. And we'll just scale it down again over here. We'll do a Shift D, we'll duplicate it over here, maybe scale it down a bit scale it on the X and Y axes. So basically what we're doing is we're just making some generally splintery looking shapes, right? So then 
what we can do is we can take these splinters and I'm just gonna zoom out to make sure that the scale on those looks right and I think it's pretty close. We're just gonna take all of those just do a shift click like this. We'll notice how under the custom debris drop down, there's an option for custom debris. And so if we click on an option for custom debris, we're just going to call this broken wood and click on OK. So what that's done is that's created a collection inside of your scene of those objects right here. And I'm not sure where those actually um, reside. We're gonna have to find them in a second. But now if we go back and rerun this, let's go down to our debris and in our instance collection for our debris, we just wanna go find our broken wood. All right, so we're just gonna scroll. We're just gonna find broken wood, custom debris, and click on it. Well now, if we hit play and let this simulate a little bit, this is going to break the wood like this, but it's also going to create that debris in here. But remember that we scaled all of this down for our other piece of wood. So I'm just going to scale it back up. So notice how when I scale that back up, this is adding that debris into my scene just like this. And so what that's allowing us to do is that's allowing us to create this kind of like needle looking debris coming off of our fence. So if we click on play, and let this simulate the rest of the way through. Notice how that debris is gonna kind of follow along with that to a certain degree, and then it's gonna all fall to the ground. So see it falling? So we've got that piece broken through right here. The only thing we need to do is we need to apply a material to these. So I'm just gonna click on, you wanna make sure that you're in your custom debris collection, but I'm just gonna click on one of these. And then I'm just going to click on new to add a new material. So we're in the material properties. I'm just going to add a brown material like this. And then I'm going to click on the other debris pieces. And we may need to tab into edit mode and assign this for that to show up. But then we're just going to do the same thing for this object. So we're just going to click in here. And in this case, you can just click the drop down and you can just select that material. So I don't remember which one of these it was, but it's okay because um, they're all a brown material. We're just going to click on assign. Then this one, we'll click the drop down, pick a material, tab into edit mode, and click on the option for assign, and then tab back out of edit mode. Notice how now these splinters are basically the same color as our fence. And so one other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to set this scene up so that this actually moves all the way out of the scene. So I'm just going to do a G X. I'm going to set this over here like this, and then I'm going to type I and I'm going to overwrite that location keyframe. So now if we click in here, we click play again. What that's going to do is this is going to fly through our scene. It's going to hit our fence and break it and then fly out of our scene. And we're going to have all these particles in the scene as well from the fence breaking. So obviously you could play around with this a little bit more, but we're just gonna go ahead and we're just gonna bake, um, call it frames one through 30. Like this, so we're just gonna click on the button for bake. So now if we click play, this is gonna run a lot faster and you can see our fence kind of breaking as we go through here and it's also creating all of these different uh, little particles. And so we could render that in like Eevee or something if we wanted to as well. So I brought some stuff in from Eevee Production Suite, but you could kind of do whatever you want with this. But notice how this really kind of simplifies this process of creating the broken fence inside a blender. All right, so if you're interested in RBD Lab, I will link to that in the notes down below. I'd love to hear what kind of tutorials you'd like to see for this add-on. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.